Hello everyone, today I'm just going to be doing a quick video about finding your book on the Amazon platform. The reason being I get asked this question all the time and some people have covered this topic before so if you have um, seen a video on this in the past then by all means you can skip it if you like. But this is going to be tackling the question why can't I find my book on Amazon? And generally what that means is that someone types in their title or they type in their keywords from their back end slots and they can't find the book anywhere on Amazon. So the problem that I seem to see a lot is that people worry that they can't find their book when they're searching for their keywords. They're confused. They wonder, you know, is my book even live? You give your book a bit of time because even when Amazon says it's published, it can take a, a bit of time to actually show. However, if your book has been on Amazon for a while, there are a few different issues that could be at play. So I'm going to go through those each now. So the first issue is, let's say if you're in the UK and you're searching on Amazon.com, you want to have a US zip code. So that is an address in the US. The same if you're anywhere outside the US, you want to have a US zip code. And you can easily find this by simply uh, Googling random zip code generator and that will give you a, a zip code. Um, I think the one I'm using at the moment is 600009. Um, I think it's a Los Angeles zip code and once you have that zip code you can just use that forever so just choose whatever zip code it is and then take a note of it or whatever and just make sure you put that in every single time that you go onto Amazon and I also make sure that I'm in incognito mode the reason why you should be in incognito mode God, every time I try to say it I say it wrong um, you know what I mean the reason for that is that it, it's like a, a clean slate because otherwise your results are actually influenced by everything in the past that you've that you've searched and also this accounts for other Amazon platforms as well so if you are outside of the UK and you're looking in the UK you want to have a UK postcode so that postal code is what we call the zip code basically and again you can find a random one just look up a random postcode generator and those are the two main platforms I search on. However, I know that also people have been wor worried when they go onto Australia, uh, Amazon, and they see that their delivery cost or their book price is way, way higher than what they marked it as. And again, that's because they're searching outside of Australia. And so the pricing is going to look different. To give you an example of this, I have currently come on to uh, Australian Amazon and I've got a UK address. And as you can see, these books are like $30, $29. And that's because I haven't changed my address. So what you need to do here is also find a Australian postcode. So they call it a postcode as well. So now we have a Brisbane uh, postcode of 4,000 and we have a little look and a look the prices are completely different. If you want to search on any Amazon platform, just make sure you do have the same address to wherever that platform actually is and you will get um, the results you want because often if you go onto amazon.com and you haven't put in a US postcode, a lot of the low content books won't show up. Definitely this is probably one of the number one reasons why your book might not show up. So, so important just to remember that. Um, and I have started also uh, doing a bit of research now on these other platforms because Australia is a new one and also in Canada where I do run ads now and those have been relatively successful recently. So don't just rule out all the other platforms and just think, oh, it's just Amazon US. So the next issue I'm going to talk about is the fact that your book is not going to rank for every keyword that you put in your backend slots or even in your title and subtitle. And this is especially the case if you're using a really kind of generic, uh, highly competitive term in your title or in your subtitle. So as an uh, example, let's say your title is Prayer Journal and that's it. And then you search on Amazon and your book is nowhere to be found. But if we have a little look on Amazon and type in Prayer Journal, and I've done this under books, you'll see that there are 60,000 results. So 
obviously in that in that case you're going to find it extremely unlikely to find your book on the first or second page under the term prayer journal unless your book is incredibly well established has lots of reviews and is selling incredibly well um, and i'll move on to how that might happen in a moment but if we want to delve a bit further let's say we search mother and son prayer journal and that has 3000 results by contrast in books and now it's worth noting this is just a complete example prayer journals in general is a highly competitive area and a highly competitive niche so i'm not suggesting you go in and, and do this but i'm just showing you the difference kind of different slightly different keywords and the results that they bring in but also it's worth mentioning here that your keywords need to be incredibly relevant to your book so for example if you're you have a prayer journal um but it's not a mother son prayer journal, then, you know, don't put mother son prayer journal in your back end keywords or anything like that. So if you find a keyword that's really um, low competition, but it, it doesn't really match your book, don't put that in your in your back end keywords. Make sure you're using keywords that are really relevant to your book and which makes sense. If someone is searching for your book under that term, you, you want your book to match that search term. So the other thing you want to bear in mind is that you're going to be ranking for the lower competition keywords first before you rank for anything else. So this is why it's so important to have a combination of keywords. So what I typically will do is I'll have some high, medium and low competition keywords in there. And what I'm hoping for is that I, I rank for those lower competitive terms first. And as I, my book gains traction and gains more vis visibility and views and sales and hopefully reviews, that it then gets boosted up in the Amazon algorithm under some more competitive terms. And that's exactly what's happened with some of my best selling books is that they initially they were ranking for quite search terms that didn't have very much search volume. So I might have got a sale here and there. Basically, if your book performs well within this search organically, then Amazon is going to reward you for that by boosting your book up and giving your book a bit more visibility. And if it's successful under those keywords, then it will boost your book up some more and so on. So if you're looking for all of your back end keywords and you're just not showing up anywhere, um, then it's it's likely that you've gone into a really competitive niche and that a lot of those keywords you're not ranking for them because they're too competitive and there's too many books out there that are trying to rank for exactly the same terms and that's another reason why you might want to try and vary some of your back-end keywords as well you don't want to have just the same thing for example gratitude journal for women gratitude journal for kids gratitude journal for girls you know think about some other terms that might be relevant such as positivity journal or something like that um, that could still be relevant to having a gratitude journal which but which isn't just using that same word over over again so sometimes what i will do if i've had a book that has been out for a while and it's just it's not making any sales at all and i have a look at the keywords and i can't find my book on the first few pages then sometimes i will switch out some of my keywords so I would recommend if you are going to do this, you probably go for kind of one keyword slot at a time. So you can kind of track that and then check back and see what happens. Another thing that I sometimes do is actually put the book on an automatic ad. Um, I will have to do a video about auto ads. I'm not going to go into all that now. But an automatic ad basically is one where you don't choose the keywords. Amazon decides where it's going to show your book that might be under certain keywords or even um for certain product but it will choose one uh keywords that you've never even thought of as well so what i sometimes do is i'll put that book on an auto ad and then i'll see well if it generates any sales and also what keywords are successful under this auto ad because then you can use some of those keywords that are successful in the auto ad and then plug them into your back end keyword slots. Now this doesn't always work and sometimes that's because the the cover or the design just isn't working and therefore you don't get the sales. But that's quite a good in way of figuring that out as well because if you run an auto ad and then you don't get any sales, then it's a pretty good um, indication 
that your cover or your design is just not is not working or it's not good enough so i've had some books where i have tried you know i've changed the cover four or five times and it still hasn't worked so you know, sometimes eventually i'll give up um but there have been occasions where i've changed the the cover and it has started um to pick up and chain and, and generate sales after that so the third and final thing is simply to check your book exists on Amazon. And that's just by putting it in your ISBN into the search bar and seeing if your book comes up. Obviously, just, you know, you can check this as the first thing just to double check your book exists. Um, in general, it will. Um, so usually it's one of the other reasons uh, that you can't find your book is it's the keywords or it's your location. But I will say when it comes to keywords, there is a lot of trial and error involved. You're never going to know 100% if you're going to rank for a keyword. And sometimes you'll think that a keyword is a great bet and then it turns out you don't rank for it at all. So, you know, there is no kind of guaranteed formula when it comes to this. And also what I would say is if you do have a book that's making sales to probably just leave those keywords alone for a while. Um, because what might happen is that you, at the moment you're ranking for certain keywords that are bringing in those sales, but you're not ranking for some others that are maybe more competitive. But that doesn't mean that down the road you're never going to rank for those terms. So I would do this kind of, I would switch up keywords in books that aren't making sales, but be cautious uh, on changing anything if you are having some success. So that's it for today. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will speak to you again very soon. <music>